City of Milton Common Council meeting to order at Tuesday, October 3rd, 2017 at 7.01 p.m. and we'll wait for Dave to be called. The agenda was posted at Dave's Ace Hardware, Piggly Wiggly, and Milton City Hall. Thank you. Um, item number two, approval of the agenda. So moved. Second. There's a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? We have an agenda. Public comments <coughs> regarding items which can be affected by council action. We have former council member Nancy Lauder. Would you like to come up to the microphone and um, talk? You're signed in. I did ask to speak at the time that it came up. Oh, okay. Thank All right. You. It's not a public hearing, just so you know. I understand. Okay, good, I'm glad. Item number four, approval of common council minutes from September 19th, 2017. Second. second. There's a motion and a second. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? The motion carries. Item number five, discussion and action regarding the 2017 Halloween Proclamation. Is there anybody that would wants to speak on this before I proclaim? <laughs> that's why we have so many in the audience tonight whereas the city of Milton wishes a safe and festive Halloween celebration for its citizens and encourages participation in the gaiety of this holiday by both young and old and whereas miniature ghosts goblins witches and other mysterious creatures emerge each year on October 31st and whereas they ring doorbells of their neighborhood and friends to extort goodies and whereas the safety of these small creatures is assured by an accompanying adult and is a source of amusement and good cheer for both the very young and the older people whom they visit and entertain, whereas I, Anissa Welch, Mayor of the City of Milton, proclaim Tuesday, October 31st, 2017, Halloween in the City of Milton. Therefore, let it be known that Tuesday, October 31st, 2017 shall be known as Halloween trick-or-treat day and the celebration will be observed between the hours of 5 30 to 7 30 p.m. <coughs> signed this third day of October 2017 any objections any objections in the audience okay we're signing away Item number six, discussion and possible action on a memorandum of understanding between the city of Milton and Pierce Farms regarding assessments. So you'll see in the packet, this was an amended item that was added uh, yesterday. In the packet, you'll see a pre-annexation agreement that was entered into between uh, Mr. Pierce and the city of Milton back in 2013. And what is on the uh, agenda this evening is a memorandum of understanding that has been drafted to reflect what we believe, both the city and, and Mr. Pierce, to believe to be the intent, intent of that document. Uh, currently, as, as, as prepared and, and adopted, uh, the pre-annexation agreement indicates that all outstanding assessments shall be due at the time uh, the property is sold or any portion of it is subdivided. Uh, so what that would mean in actuality is if somebody came along to Mr. Pierce's 157 acres and decided to build one home on it, they would be due, the, the assessments would come due, and the assessments are right around $200,000. In talking with Mr. Pierce uh, and, and, and our attorney, uh, we, we came to the understanding that that wasn't necessarily the intent 
of that document. Uh, so we wanted to have this memorandum of understanding to clarify that only the portion of the assessments would become due commensurate with the amount of land that is being subdivided. So this is, I mean, to, I, don't, I don't think it's any secret, this is in response. Uh, this came up as part of the discussions regarding the planned uh, subdivision for Mr. Pierce's is, uh, current farmland in which the property owner intends to purchase uh, about 19 acres. Uh, so the language that we have included in this MOU would only make the portion of the assessment due commensurate to that land. That 19 acres equates to about 12.58% of the overall land holdings. So therefore, 12.58% of the assessments would come due at the time that that land division occurs. So that, again, was, uh, was the understanding that, that all parties had, uh, but we wanted to make sure we memorialize that in this MOU so there's no questions in the future if for some reason we're all no longer here when the next phase of development comes or something of that, that nature. So uh, it, it is really about as, as straightforward as that. Uh, I don't know, Mike, did you have anything to add? Okay. Mark, did you have anything to add? No, I think you covered it well. Okay. <clears throat> Is there any questions or comments? anybody understand or have any concerns is there a motion I'll make a motion that we approve the memorandum of understanding second. there's a motion and a second any further questions or comments all those in favor Aye. Aye. all those opposed the motion carries Discussion and possible action on fall 2017 pavement improvement bids. As part of the 2017 budget last fall, the City Council adopted uh, the creation of a wheel tax for the City of Milton. Wheel tax collections began in April of this year. Uh, so now we are, uh, we'll, at the, by the end of this year, we'll, we'll have uh, eight months, nine months, give or take, worth of uh, wheel tax collected in the City of Milton. Uh, so. Uh, we are proposing for this for this year to have a fall improvement program uh, to utilize those wheel tax dollars to uh, provide preventative maintenance and, and upgrades to the existing infrastructure. Um, next year, uh, we, would, we would take care of this in the spring, uh, but this year we're taking care of it in the fall, one, because we didn't have a wheel tax in the spring of last, last year, and two, uh, we wanted to have enough data available to us to know to anticipate how much the wheel tax dollars would collect. And we're seeing right between about $11,000 and $13,000 a month. So we are, uh, we believe that by the end of this year, we'll have about $106,000 worth of wheel tax collected. Uh, and sitting down with our engineers and our public work staff, we talked about uh, what are some streets that we can uh, address yet in 2017 for that amount of dollars. What are the ones that are in most need? What are the ones that fit that bill? Uh, so we talked about uh, some streets that, that were in need of improvement. Bowers Lake Road, our, a portion of Arthur Lane and a portion of Columbus Street met that criteria and we, were, we felt confident that we could complete those three projects uh, with the anticipated wheel tax collections. Uh, so we put those out to bid. We received a bid back of $95,000. Uh, so that was below what we anticipated. Uh, that's below what we anticipated collecting for the wheel tax. However, there is a portion of Bowers Lake Road that is not currently in the city. Half of the right-of-way is in the city, half of it is in the town. It's very similar to the situation that occurred last year with Cerns Road. So I've been in contact with the town of Milton and they are in agreement to annex in the remaining portion of that uh, Bowers Lake Road, similar to what they did with Cerns Road. Uh, so we would be proposing to uh, resurface the entire stretch of Bowers Lake Road from Janesville Street to the end of the city limits, which is just east of the entrance to Oak Ridge Golf Course. That would add approximately $33,000 to the overall project cost. So if you take $95,000 plus $33,000, you'd realize that we are over the $106,000 that we anticipate collecting for wheel tax. But what we, would, what we would propose would be to use a combination of contingency and existing uh, infrastructure dollars that are that that may be left in 2017 to fill that gap. We feel confident uh, that 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 money can be utilized in this in 
this capacity without endangering any other uh, situations within the city. So we are proposing uh, that we approve the bid with Rock Road for $95,000 and then our engineer uh, would finalize the, the work order for the additional right-of-way on Bowers Lake uh, that we anticipate uh, annexing into the city, uh, which would put the total project around 130000 So we'll move. Second. There's a motion and a second. Any comments or questions? Just a suggestion. Mm -hmm. um, when we have this, when we finish these three streets, mm -hmm. I really think it'd be good to get some PR out to the community to have them understand that we appreciate the wheel tax and that we put it to use in a you know, visible I agree. way. I agree. So, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. We can do road cuttings. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there's a motion and a second. All those in favor of roads? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? The motion carries. Here we go, discussion of possible action to approve new operator licenses. On the agenda, we have three operator licenses uh, for approval. They have gone through the requisite background check performed by the Milton Police Department and the city's municipal clerk, and they are being recommended for approval. Any questions or comments? Move that we approve the new operator license as presented. Second. There's a motion and a second. Any further questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? The motion carries. Discussion and possible action on the 2018 Rock County Joint Powers Agreement. This is an item that is on the agenda annually. Uh, it is an item in which the City of Milton enters into the Joint Powers Agreement with Rock County as well as all other municipalities in Rock County uh, with, the, with the purpose of uh, making sure telecommunications and the 911 system uh, is all on board with all communities in Rock County. Um, Scott, did you have anything additional to add to that? Well, just a, I guess just a general um, reminder. Any other questions or comments? I'll make a motion that we approve the Rock County Joint Powers Agreement for 2018. Second. There's a motion and a second. Any further questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? The motion carries. Item number 10, discussion and possible action on ordinance number 436, rezoning of land located at 1115 East High Street from B1 and M2 to PUD. This is to finalize the rezoning of uh, uh, Nate Rogers, which is, I guess is referred to as Nate Rogers' Badger State Maintenance uh, Project out on High Street. The Council and Plan Commission previously reviewed and approved this item back in September of 2016, uh, but we need to re-approve uh, this item in order to officially uh, record it with the county as a rezoning. Uh, so we need to approve the ordinance. Uh, a public hearing was held at the plan commission this afternoon. Uh, there was no one present, so therefore no one spoke, but <laughs> but uh, this item is, is back on the agenda for, for approval, uh, for final approval of that, of that project. I move that we approve ordinance 2000 or 2017-436 to rezone the property located at uh, 1115 South High Street from B2 to PUD. Second. It's B1 and M2 to PUD. Okay. I can't read this. <laughs> I'm sorry, so, I'm trying to do it from a phone this week. There's uh, a motion and a second. And um, Dave, did you hear that? Okay. Is there a motion and a second? Okay. okay. That's what you're saying. Okay. All those in favor? So, j just wait. Just to be clear, is that approve the first reading, reading, waive the second and third reading, and adopt? Sure. Okay. All right. Anything else? All those in favor? 
Aye. All those opposed? Okay, the motion carries. Item number 11, presentation discussion and possible action on the 2018 budget, introduction and schedule. And Nancy, you wanted to speak on this, so go ahead. Ooh, it works. Um, yes, I'm, my name is Nancy Lauder. I live in Milton. Uh, I was reading over the proposed budget, and what I'm seeing is a change in format with um, the uh, 2018 budget referring to the 2017 budget, but not stating the numbers. So I'm going to request that the format state uh, the numbers, like for the um, nonprofit requests, it is not as clear in this format what they will be receiving. So I'm asking for the numbers to be put in. Um, and I'm asking, are you still going to be asking each of the nonprofits to appear and share the number of people that have been in attendance at their events? Well, Nancy, as you know, as you remember from your time on the city council, that this is a draft and a very preliminary budget, and then we actually don't get a lot of our figures till October and November. Correct. So um, I guess if you're not understanding the format, um, you know, we can talk about that a little bit later when we get to the final stages, but um, this is the format, and unless somebody on the council is not understanding the format, I think we'll probably just move along like we like we will be doing, and we have a budget session planned. I, I'm Does that make forward, sense to you? I, yeah, I, I recognize that. I'm just asking for it um, to be a little more clear, and that was my question. I think if you have specific uh, questions, you could just put them in the form of an email, and um, then we can try to help you understand the budget process better. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Al? Sure. Um, originally, what we intended to do this evening was talk about the budget schedule, similar to what we did this time last year. Uh, but as we, as, as we continue to work through the budget, uh, we thought it might be beneficial to see a snapshot uh, of, of where things are in the budget. Um, and, and I will say that the memo that's included is literally the identical <coughs> memo from last year with simply changes to the dates. So there hasn't been a change in format at all for, for anything. Uh, it's literally exactly the same as it was last year. Uh, so we provided a snapshot of where the budget is, and as the mayor pointed out, it is October 3rd. Uh, the budget will not be adopted until late November, so there is much work and discussion to do during uh, the coming 45 to 50 days. Um, but again, we, we thought it would be good to, uh, to kind of let folks know where we are. Ultimately, I can hit some highlights of where things currently sit, and then if we want to talk in more detail, we certainly can, uh, but we also have a budget study session planned for uh, October 17th, in which I'll present a PowerPoint presentation similar to what I've done in the past in my, my three budgets here, um, and then in, it'll kind of drill down in some of the details. Um, what we show right now uh, is very similar to what it was last year, frankly. Uh, there hasn't been much change in, in terms of expenditures or, or, or uh, revenues. Um, the good news is, is that uh, due to the growth that we have seen in the community uh, over the last year, uh, the value of the community has increased uh, substantially, uh, which hopefully provides some relief on the tax rate side uh, of the equation. Uh, we will see some slight increases most likely in, in employee relations in terms of contract, uh, agreed to contract increases as well as increases for staff members who did not see an increase in 2017. Uh, those, those staff members who saw an increase in 2017 will not see an increase in 18. Uh, we planned to change uh, some of the uh, benefits packages, uh, but that information is very premature at this time. 
as we are still waiting for health insurance rates to come to come in and be finalized. Uh, so those numbers could change dramatically between now and when the time that the budget is adopted. Um, you'll see on page uh, da, 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 four is probably one of the more impactful pages in this document as far as a snapshot. These are changes in the 2008 tax levy. And again, what that means is these are changes from 17 to 18 in terms of the levy. So these are either increases or decreases over what was uh, allocated in 17. But again, these numbers are preliminary um, and, and can and will change by the time uh, the council adopts the budget. Uh, so as uh, I guess to address the, the speaker's comment in terms of nonprofit requests, you'll see the historical society just has a dash. That means that there's not an increase or a decrease in what they have requested from 2017 to 2018. YMCA scholarship shows 1,200. In 2017, they received an allocation of zero, and they are requesting 1,200. In terms of the gathering place, they received an allocation of $5,706, and they are requesting $10,000. So that's, that's how that page uh, works. Again, it's a change from what was allocated in 17 to what is being requested in 18. Are there are there questions about about that? I'm sorry. Um, oh, go ahead. Does everyone understand that, or do you have questions? So these, it's just that these particular nonprofits have already yep. given yep. us their information. Correct. Correct. We're still waiting on the others if they plan on doing it. Right, right, and and historically, there's really only been, at least I should say historically, in, in the three budgets I've done, there's only been two other organizations that have ever requested, and that is the Milton Area Youth Coalition and Milton College. And it's 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 my understanding, at least at this point, that they do not intend to request funds this year. Um, the the chamber doesn't expect, right? Right. They remember last year they withdrew their request. So. Right. So again, these and, and these are these are changes. Uh, the, this is how the budget currently sits, and these are based on requests from the various departments or, or entities that have put this together, such as you know the fire department. Its budget shows an increase of eighteen thousand eight hundred twenty-eight dollars. So that's re <coughs> reflected in this in this change sheet here. Yep. I, oh, go ahead. Um, the where in this budget? Is the replacement of the chairs in the conference room? <laughs> that is you were supposed question. to have a fundraiser for I, that. At this, time, <laughs> at this time, they are not. That is not in the budget. Okay. Uh, good, good. We are. We're going to start using milk crates. I think at some point. You're going to get metal but chairs. You know That's what? what you're I get. appreciate that question, though. I appreciate that question. You have chairs right there. I know. I know. I think that should be in there. Yeah, here we all need. <laughs> <laughs> I did have a question too, uh, related, uh, but, but yeah, related because it has a <coughs> burden. Mm -hmm. I really appreciate, Dan. I'm going to say it again. I really appreciate all you guys have done on debt service. Mm -hmm. And my question is is there an advantage to us to bump that up a little more? And I, we really can't because of. Because of Go ahead, tell me it, I think in order to pay off debt early, it has to be callable. Yeah. And nothing is callable until 2022. Understand. Okay, so we're kind of locked into paying that all. Okay. Right. Yeah. yeah. It's unfortunate. Yeah. Yeah. There's. It's not like a like a car payment where you can, you know, overpay on your monthly car payment to, and with the intent of paying it down. They, the banks want their money. They compute that into their sure. into their interest rate. Frankly. And that includes like the the borrowing that was done for <coughs> streets, right? Correct. Are you talking about the 2007 debt that was refinanced in 2016? Yep. Yeah, that's not that's callable till 2024. It's all in there. All right. It's all in there. Yeah, I think it's and those those are those are good questions. And, and I know in years past, as part of the budget process, even though it's not really part of the budget process, we always address the debt service issue, and we will certainly do that again. Just to keep folks aware of, of where we are in that process and how that impacts uh, potential future decisions, um, mm -hmm. not only from a tax rate perspective but also from a borrowing capacity perspective. So there is a plan next year. There's some debt that is callable, and it was part of the plan when we did the refinancing in 2016, 
where we're going to take uh, $400,000 from library donations because there was $400,000 of new money, so to speak, in 2016 to take the donation dollars to pay off higher, higher interest rate debt. So, and I've talked with Lisa and the money's essentially there, so we're in good shape there, so. But that's not until 2018. That's next year. Yeah. That's April of 18. That's the budget we're so, working on right yeah. now, Linda, come so on. <laughs> it's actually callable April 1st, so 178 days from now. After the winter thaw. <laughs> So just took 180 minus two. In in terms of the in in terms of the budget snapshot, again page four kind of shows okay where are we at currently today, with request allocations things of that nature. Page five is is the is the page that really at the end of the day drives drives the budget. It's really what drives how we. What, what the final expenditure number is, and that is, if folks remember from our conversations last year, that is the expenditure restraint figure. That's a, that is a, a figure that is uh, imposed by the state uh, it, that pro, uh, prohibits municipalities from uh, exceeding expenditures by a certain percentage increase. And what you will see is that we have put a plug number in of 1.5%. What that means is the state, uh, we believe, we have built a budget with a 1.5% increase on expenditures in anticipation of the state giving us that number. The good news is, is we think that number will be higher, but we don't know. And we won't know until, as the state says, the end of October, whatever that is. If that's literally October 31st or October 27th, we, we don't know. We, it would be great if we had that number by October 17th because that really starts to then galvanize the budget once we have that number. So you'll see with a 1.5% increase that we have as a plug number, based on that information, we would still need to cut $37,346 from this budget. So if nothing changes, if that truly comes back as the number from the state, the state says, yep, ERP is 1.5%, we will need to cut $37,346 from the budget. If that number goes up, we have to cut less. If the number goes down, we have to cut more. And uh, you know, until the time that we know that, it's it's hard for us to tell. Um, so that's when we, you know, that's when the, the the real difficult conversations happen, and and some of those will be just simple arithmetic, but some of them will be policy decisions, and that's uh, that's where I guess. You folks get to do some of the heavy lifting and, and make some of those more difficult decisions. And we all remember last year there was a lot of those difficult decisions made, and and uh, and you know we anticipate there being difficult decisions as well this year. So just for sake of, of I guess kind of <coughs> foreshadowing, if that number, that 1.5 percent number, goes to say 1.9 which is what it was this year. The state allowed us to increase by 1.9% in the 17 budget, the budget that we're currently working under. If that stays flat, it would drop that number from 37,000 to cut down to 20-ish thousand. So it's very likely at the end of the day, there's gonna need to be cuts done to this budget. The question is, is gonna be how much. Um, I, I think we just played around with it and, and that number would have to go up to like 2.6 or something like that for, for, for the budget to be flat and that, that's not, I'm not going to say that it's impossible, but I'm going to say that it's impossible. And so, we still have, we still have to talk to all the employee groups about health insurance and Al and I have had individual conversations with a handful of folks who may jump on or may jump off so that may increase or decrease these numbers too. Yeah, so. that has a dramatic effect on the overall levy, um, how many people are on our insurance, and uh, so that, that, that will have an impact on the levy. So at the end of the day, if we find out that um, three people jump off, that in and of itself could balance the budget. But at the end of the day, if we find out that two people jump on, then we're looking to cut probably more like $60,000 from the budget. So 
Uh, that, that's, that's some of those unknowns that, that we face in the budget process. Uh, <clears throat> what we have seen as far as insurance rates is that, uh, we've joked about this internally, we got good news, they're only going up 8%. <laughs> so, in, in the world we live in, 8% increase is good news, which is kind of, kind of sad. Uh, but that's what we have seen from our response back to our, from our current provider. We're currently talking to other providers to see if they can beat that rate. It's highly unlikely, <coughs> highly unlikely that they will. Um, Dean has shown year after year that they uh, consistently uh, have the lowest prices for those who are currently on their, on their system. So we don't anticipate that number going down. Uh, but we don't know for sure. So we, that, that's still something to be seen. The uh, page six of this shows the levy. And I know that this, <coughs> this gets confusing. I know it does. Because um, you have the tax rate, you have the levy, you've got expenditure history, you've got levy limits. At the end of the day, the only thing that the council can control is the levy. The council cannot control the tax rate. The tax rate it is a product of, uh, of taxable value versus expenditures. Um, so the denominator of that equation is what the value of the community is. The good news is, is that we've saw a dramatic increase in the value of the community and we expect that trend to continue for the next couple of years. Uh, but the bad news is, is that, uh, you know, costs, costs increase as well. So what we, with this budget, if nothing were to change, and we know things have to change, but let's just say nothing were to change, we would actually be levying 50, roughly $53,000 less than what we are allowed to levy. And somebody may say, well, why don't we just levy the, uh, that $53,000? Why don't we just increase the budget? You, you just got done telling me you got to cut 37, but then you're telling me you got to leave 53 on the table. That's because of the expenditure restraint. If we violate the expenditure restraint, <laughs> we lose $122,000 of state aid. So in order to gain 52, we'd lose 122. So it's that, it's that you know, catch-22 game that the state has imposed on local municipalities. So, and again, I know that that gets confusing, and I'd be more than happy to sit down for any length of time to have, help folks understand that, if you don't. Um, but that's, that's kind of where we're at. So we will be levying more dollars than we did last year, but still less than the levy limit. The uh, last piece that I will talk about, I'm going to jump back up. I'm sorry for, for doing that, but page three of the packet shows the capital requests. Last year in the budget we had $182,000 of capital requests. It is, it is our intent and hope, but it's ultimately your decision, that we keep that figure level. Um, the reason behind that or the logic behind that is once that money's gone, it's, you generally never see it come back, um, but for a referendum, I guess. So we had $182,000 worth of capital requests last year. So we went to the department heads and said, we've got $182,000 in the budget this year. What can we get done for $182,000? So you'll see on that list uh, what can be done for $182,000. You'll see also on that list not included in the 2018 budget. Uh, that list is incomplete. And on the 17th, we will provide the rest of that list, how we got us about nine or ten other things today that are that are that are pieces of capital or capital improvements in infrastructure or facilities that that need to get done uh, they didn't rise to the level of, of had to, had to be done in 2018 but there are things that need to be done so we want to make sure we include that list just to keep that in the back of people's mind but also as a, as a good way of keeping uh, you know tabs on what is out there those things, like I said, include pieces of equipment that are eventually will realize their useful life, but also capital improvements. Uh, the library parking lot, for example, is one that is on that list. If anybody's, we have this beautiful, beautiful library, and, and if you have anybody who drives around to the back of the library, it's not so not so nice anymore. So that's something that you know we want to address, and we want to keep that, you know, maybe not on the front burner, but half on the front burner. So. So we'll include that list. And, and again, if things change in the budget process and, and we, get a good, we get good numbers on the expenditure restraint and 
Uh, we get good numbers, good returns on health insurance. Some of those things might bump up, might be able to bump up. We would, we would be more than happy uh, to increase that $182,000 number in order to address the ongoing needs of the community. Uh, but we want to also be remain mindful and prioritize to the best of our ability with the funds that are available to us. So, um, so that is uh, that is a uh, uh, page two. Dan, did you have anything on page seven or eight that you wanted to talk about? That's those numbers are small, and there's a lot of them, so you get to talk about those. <laughs> <laughs> That's just kind of a breakdown of overall by department and I talked to one council member and I'll and I'll in the next day or two once I get done reconciling the September everything in September I'll email you all a detailed Excel document because there was a request for one that has like each of the line items oh, that yeah. make up each of these areas but generally that's just the total expenditures including personnel and and materials and supplies for those various groupings whether it's City Hall, DPW, that kind of thing. So I guess if there's any specific questions, I can help answer it. But I think the detail will make a lot more sense once I email that out. Yeah, there's, as, as always, with every one of these lines, there's, there's some, you know, two, three, four, sometimes 20 lines behind it. Um, but, you know, it, at this point, to print off 176 pages, knowing that it's going to change literally every day um we thought just would kind be of irresponsible in my opinion we, we thought that it would, this this get, this gets you get kind of the glance at what's going up what's going down and then as always if anybody has a question of why we certainly can dig into that too and, and if we could you know, i'd be happy if i just received it friday before our before our, the friday before our meeting on the 17th. oh okay so uh the four, that, 14th does that, that make sense yeah, yeah. Yep, we certainly can do that. And, and like I said, I'll have a PowerPoint presentation too to kind of help help uh, guide the conversation too. Um, and so, any any questions on those before we get to the schedule portion of it? Because uh, you know what we've done in years past too that I think worked well and, and I got good feedback on is generally when somebody asks me a question, I I, I try to respond all so everybody. Because generally, if somebody's got a question, that means somebody else does too. So if you have questions about certain things and you want to email them to me or just call me, um, I, I'll respond to, to everybody um, so that way everybody kind of understands. But you all cannot reply all. That is true, yeah. Okay, yeah. just so yeah. we're clear, we're not, that's not acceptable still. <laughs> right. <laughs> it will never be acceptable. <laughs> You're right. So the last item that we have, and this is, um, I guess, an actionable item, is, is we presented a schedule. We looked back at last year. Um, we're actually doing this a little bit sooner than we did last year, believe it or not, as far as scheduling goes. Uh, and we provided three options. There are pluses and minuses to all of these options. As usual, it's such a strange thing that we adopt our budget right in the middle of two of the most popular, well-traveled holidays of the year. but such as life uh, but uh, so the you know the the Thanksgiving holiday always kind of causes um, some difficulties in, in budget scheduling but what we have on here are the things that absolutely have to be done so that's another thing I wanted to point out we we have to approve the budget for publication we have to pu pu publish it in the budget or in the courier we have to have a public hearing and we have to we have to actually pass a budget so that doesn't, so in every one of these schedules, it doesn't mean that we can't have additional study sessions, that we can't have additional special meetings, but these are the things that we absolutely have to do. Um, so we want to make sure everybody is okay with these dates that are, that are provided here, and if there's opinions about which option makes the most sense, um, certainly we're, we're flexible uh, from the staff side of things. Assessment ratio that you don't get until mid to late November is that uh, uh, we have to have that in order to do either of these dates or uh, no? No, because the council's just approving the levy. That assessment ratio just hones in on what the final tax rate is. So, and as Al had mentioned earlier, that that's really out of 
your guys' control. And we'll, on the 17th, we'll show you what the tax rate, if you will, would look like assuming exactly 100% based on the equalized value. What, what we do know is it won't be exactly 100%. It could be 98%. It could be 102% or, or something yeah, like that. For example, last year, I think it was 103.4, something like yeah. that, which, which, is, which is really high. Uh, but and then other years it's been like 97, 98. So it's just a number that. Say. But these these options all coincide with the past practice of at least the last couple of years of having the public hearing and adopting the budget on different dates. Right. So if we have special meetings couldn't we cancel the 21st meeting since it's so many people are probably might be traveling school there's no school on wednesday of that day typically so like if we did option so yeah so if option we get, two option could we cancel Oh, oh, could we just cancel the right? Because, yeah, 21st, the 21st, yeah. I think, yeah, what you're saying is, is there's a regular meeting on the 21st of November. Um, sometimes that falls the week of Thanksgiving, sometimes it does not, but this year it does. So if we went with option two, could we cancel the 21st meeting? Yeah, that would be up to you guys, but yeah. I would appreciate that for me. Oh, well, there yeah. you go, we got one. I'd appreciate that for you too. <laughs> yeah, or just make that. Yeah, we, or we could have a regular council meeting and not discuss the budget. We could have a two-week lag in between the public hearing and the adoption. That's not a problem either. Yeah, I guess I would prefer not to have a meeting on the, tw the Tuesday before right. Thanksgiving. Yeah. I think option two looks good. I think option two looks to, looks good, too. I'll make okay. a motion that we go with option two. Is that option two with the cancellation of the November 21st? Meeting? Yes. I'll second that. Is there any further comment or discussion? I would like to ask that we do have our nonprofits come and present to us, though. Yeah, Dan and I were talking about that. Um, you know, we have a budget study session planned for next, or for, for, for October 17th at 6 o'clock. We could have them come to that meeting. Um, you know, we, we, can do, we can do a presentation uh, of the budget. Um, it, that can take 15 minutes or that could take the whole hour. It's really up to you guys. But, you know, we certainly could, could have presentations and then run through a PowerPoint presentation or we could run through a PowerPoint presentation and then have, have um, nonprofits present or we could have nonprofits present at 6 and then I can go through the PowerPoint presentation as part of our regular council meeting too. I mean, it, so, so if, if our folks, would you prefer they come and speak at 6? Yeah, I think 6 is good. So and I told Dave. Oh, okay. Contact okay. Him. Yeah. Um, All right. We can do that. He's eager to speak to all. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Linda, Linda, and Inga and I heard Dave speak uh, last week. Yeah. I, I think he's very eager to speak. <laughs> but we were just with him on oh, Sunday. Oh yeah. 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 yeah he's Dave is everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's fine. So we'll, we will uh, get in contact with the nonprofits tomorrow and let them know that if they would like to come present, uh, they could come present on Tuesday, October 17th at 6 p.m., give or take, um, you know, 15, 20 minutes, whatever. Okay. So. so there's a motion and a second regarding our schedule for budget sessions. Is there any further questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Okay, we have a budget schedule. So Thank you. Just one question. So then mm -hmm. in November, we'll have a meeting on the 8th, the 14th, and the 28th. The 7th. Well, that's election. Oh, yes, it yes, will be the yes. 8th. we will have to change that to the 8th, yes. So is that right? Those three days? The 8th, the 14th, and the 28th, correct? Okay. So we'll, I just wanted to. Yep, good catch. Right. And bring leftover turkey stuff on the 28th. You will. <laughs> <laughs> Turkey dinner. Yeah. Turkey dinner. Or if things go well, I may bring some venison. Yes, we want venison for sure. Thank you, everybody. And, and please, 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 uh, uh, and I know several of you have already done it already, uh, do not hesitate to give Dan or I a call, um, ask for questions before the 17th. There's no um, 
there's certainly no wrong question. Yeah, there's no wrong question, and there's there's nothing that says you have to wait until a council meeting to ask a question. You certainly can if that's your prerogative, but um, that by all means, please. As as I said in my career article, just give me a call. <laughs> Okay, item number 12, discussion and possible action on the inclusion of the Pledge of Allegiance at City Council meetings. I was the uh, one who brought that up last time. Um, I just feel with, one thing I'll say this, it, uh, it, there's a lot of differing opinions in America at this time about a lot of different issues. But one thing I think we all can agree on is that, uh, at least I am proud to be an American and I see the flag is a symbol of that and uh, and the pledge to be a symbol of that pride and uh, I'm proud that we can disagree and that we can have different opinions and I guess I feel like I miss the pledge a lot at a lot of things and uh, several organizations I belong to do have in the last year or two reinstituted the pledge as a way to start their meetings so that's why I brought it up I think it's a great idea, and I'm actually I've always been a little bit bothered that the only time that we do it at council meetings is when the Boy Scouts are here. Other councils do it. That's up to you guys. I'll make a motion that we that we include the Pledge of Allegiance in our all of our city council meetings. Second. Like our committee meetings or just our city council meetings? That's what you meant, right? City Council oh. meetings. There's a motion and a second. Any further comment or questions? All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay, the motion carries. General items. Committee reports. I have a general item. Um, I just would like to let everybody know that the tourism and the Tourism Committee is still working on our advertisements for the Visitor's Guide. And um, so if you haven't, if you're not in that right now as a business, please reconsider and think about doing it. It goes to a lot of places throughout the state and outside of the state. Um, and then I also just wanted to let people know that the Tourism Committee decided to um, rediscuss the funds for the naming rights of the Mary Milton tree lighting. So that opportunity is still out there. If any of the, if anybody is interested in that, just please um, call me. <laughs> Any other committee reports? Um, see, the Historic Preservation com uh, Committee had a um, presentation on dealing with stubborn vacancies downtown last week, and it was quite successful with a, lot of, a very large turnout in Milton House, and very interesting stuff was talked about. Great. So we should have them come do a presentation for us sometime? Probably could. There I don't you know go. If they <laughs> to the region. Oh, okay. Linda? Um, I'm sorry. I was trying to pull this up before. I did want to make an announcement on behalf of the Milton Area Chamber of Commerce. Um, October is actually a time where our country celebrates manufacturing, and the Milton Area Chamber of Commerce has uh, today have had um, open house and tours in two of our own, um, Ivonic and Charter NEX Films. There's also the opportunity to tour those industries on Friday, and if you're interested in doing that, please contact the Chamber office. There, There is limited space, but I went on these tours last year, and, and it's very interesting to see the things that are created right here in the city of Milton. It's just incredible. Um, so I would recommend to anybody to do that. And I want to thank the Chamber for, um, for celebrating this along with the rest of the state and the country. Any other committee reports? 
just to uh, thank everyone that attended the 25th anniversary of the gathering place. Uh, our mayor did a nice job on her proclamation for the uh, anniversary and um, you know it was a nice event. We, we all felt badly that uh, Marion's nephew uh, did not show up as part of the event and um, I, I felt badly for the, the people that had done a lot of work for the event. Him, uh, come. They had anticipated him to be there as part of that. But nonetheless, it, it ended up being a nice uh, event. And uh, I, yeah, it, it really is a beautiful facility. And um, it, it really is a, a wonderful part of the com community. So. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Anything? Okay, staff reports. Howie. Um, let's see, we, had, we sent out the second, we're going to send out the second bunch of tree letters for the other parts of the city that didn't get theirs last spring. So they're going to get theirs and then they'll have till May 1st to get rid of some of the emerald ash trees and the hazardous trees on the terraces and sidewalks. Um, Are you leaving any of the Lamar Manor? Not a lot. Not on the terraces. There's not a lot left. Yeah. There seemed like there were more ash trees on that that section of the city. There's more maples on this side. So, but um, yeah. There and a lot. Most just about all the, almost all of the residents have done them privately. So we're not going to have very many assessments. So, um, and I, I think having you know like the six months just about to take care of it helps out quite a bit. So. Um, and then um, leaf collection officially starts next week. Um, we've been doing some of it just to stay ahead of it. Um, they're flushing hydrants for the next two or three weeks. Um, next week, um, the sidewalk contractor should be here to finish up their the yearly work for the you know for the sidewalks and the curb and gutters. And we did have to finally shut the splash park down last week. So. Dan, anything? No, I don't really have anything. Chief? Continuing on in our last hiring process, things are going well. shooter response is something that I did quite a bit. Really? Yeah. I 
See, I, I don't even count my words anymore. I'm a rule guy, so. <laughs> 698, I was done. <laughs> <laughs> Which word can I cut? Yeah. It's like the budget. Yeah, exactly. That's all I got. Would you, would you, um, would you be interested in, in uh, doing one with the council? Your safety forum. And that, that is a very good topic for that. And Al and I discussed about public safety forum. Um, accreditation is really my focus right now because I don't want to that's passed and we can start with um, and did we get the any information on the um, the equipment the new equipment for the speeding on Parkview Drive I'm still compiling those numbers we've done um, so we did a trial on Parkview but I'm going to do a longer data collection um, Be setting that up, I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to do it. I've also been doing vehicle counts on College Street, Rogers Street, and now it's sitting on Greenman Street. Lisa? A um, lot of changes next year for the library, mostly behind the scenes, but people will see it in our catalog. Right now has about 750,000 items. Um, beginning in January next year, we're going to have over 2 million um, items because we're joining our catalog with the um, Lakeshore's Library System catalog. I might have mentioned that earlier. Um, and along with that, it comes some nice features uh, like texting. You'll, you'll be able to get a text when your item is in the library or when you have something that's due. Um, and just a lot of uh, neat search uh, features, too. Um, along with that, we have noticed a pattern for a couple of years now. We wanted to wait until we were open in the renovation with our library hours. Currently, we're open Monday through Wednesday until 8 p.m., and then Thursday and Friday until 5 p.m. So what we've noticed is uh, after 6 o'clock on Wednesdays, it's, it's like a ghost town. It's not a lot of people are coming to the library that late. Um, but at 5 or 5 o'clock on Thursday or Friday, we, we got a lot of people still sticking around, coming you know, after work. So we're going to change our hours and be open until 6 o'clock on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. That helps people who are still working, um, and it allows us to change our schedule and not affect our budget either. It's the same two hours that we're moving, moving around. So that's it. Inga. Al. So um, I wanted to kind of share this, this story uh, with the council. I know I told Linda about it already, but after our council meeting two weeks ago, um, I got a phone call the next day from somebody who was in attendance at the council meeting that night. And they said, you know, I go to council meetings, town board meetings all the time. I'm at them all the time in big communities, small communities, I'm all over. And I can say in all my years of being at council meetings, I have never been at a council meeting where it appears that the council is having as much fun as you guys are. And I took that as a, a very, very good thing. And I think it's not only that you guys are having fun, but that you get along and it's, it's nice. And I, I said, well, you know, I appreciate that comment. I said, you know, I guess fortunately or unfortunately, depending on how you look at it, that's a rather new development. Um, six months ago, that was not the case. And it had, you know, really, powerful impacts negatively on a lot of people and it's nice to see that that change to positivity has had an impact in a good way on people and when I see all the things that are happening in our state in our community that are negative negative people negative things shootings 
budgets, awful things. It's very hard for individuals to control those things. We might be able to control it as a society. We might be able to control it through the government. Maybe we can, maybe we can't. But what we can control is how we treat each other, how we treat people. And that's ultimately what people recognize and what they remember is how you made them feel, how you treated other people. And you can control how you let those negative people into your life if you allow them in and you enable them. You allow them to be negative to yourself and then you give them a platform to be negative to other people. And that's what you can control. How much time, how much energy do you give to these people? And people are watching. And people appreciate it when there's positive, collegial, friendly behavior from their elected officials. It's a wonderful thing. It makes our lives better as staff. I'm sure it makes your lives better as elected officials. And the community sees it and they recognize it. And when you let that negativity into your life, it manifests itself in many different ways. And you become like the frog in the pot of water. And the temperature slowly rises and slowly rises and slowly rises. And the frog doesn't even know that the temperature is going up. And at some point, the water is boiling and the frog never even knew when it's too late. And I think that that's where we are a lot in society, is that we've allowed so much negativity all the time in our life. It's become so commonplace. We've become immune to it. We've just become accustomed to it. And that's sad. So I just, again, I just point out that little story that somebody noticed. And I'm sure there's many other people that have noticed too. How much fun this group has, how nice it is, and they feel connected to you. They don't feel separated from, from this group or from the city staff. They feel like you're approachable, that you're that you're, you're good community members, that you're good neighbors. When they see the negativity, they say, I don't want to deal with that. I don't want to be a committee member. I don't want to put myself in that position. I don't want to be mixed up with that. So the more positivity that we have, the friendlier that we are, the less conspiracies that we try to create out of nothing, the better things are for everybody. So that's my general thought. And now, you guys are going to love team building. Just remember how much fun you have together. <laughs> and I appreciate your comments. And I really appreciate that person calling us and, and saying that. And, and that was really nice. Okay, so this is going to be speed team building. We are building a fall profile of everybody to be kept on record, to be used against you in the future. <laughs> it will come up at a candidate forum or a, an employee evaluation or for Mark contract time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so they're real. These are really easy questions, but because there's ten of them, and you can pass on one, um, we're going to do it as fast as we can do it. Okay, Dave, are you ready? Okay, all right. We'll start with Chief because he looks really excited. <laughs> we too bad we don't have buzzers, and we'll go around this way, and then. The how we'll get two in a row and we'll go around the other way. And we'll just do this till we're done. Ready? Pumpkin or jack o' lantern? Pumpkin. 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 Jack o' lantern? Pumpkin. <laughs> I'll say C because Grant says pumpkin. <laughs> pumpkin. Pumpkin. Dave said pumpkin too. Pumpkin. <laughs> All right, Howie. Pumpkin. Hot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're not going to call you that. <laughs> <laughs> this is your new nickname. Anybody in the audience want to participate? All right, he's got it. All right, anybody else? All right, 
Then we'll start with you. <laughs> oh, hot apple cider or cold apple cider? Neither. Oh, jeez. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a neither, too. <laughs> Spiked. <laughs> Dave. Hot. Cold. Hot. Cold. Hot. Hot. Cold. Either. Either. Ooh. Hot. Uh, cold. Cold. Favorite apple. Macintosh. Gala. <coughs> Jonathan Gold. Braver. Only Honeycrisp. Organic Cortland. Honeycrisp. Honey crisp. Yellow Delicious. Dave? Market Red Delicious. Honeycrisp. Honeycrisp. The Green Apple. <laughs> I like the sucker. Honeycrisp? Okay, ready? Candied or caramel? Caramel. 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 Okay. Ghost or goblin? Goblin. <laughs> Ghost. Goblin. Ghost. Goblin. Goblin. Ghost. Ghost. Uh, ghost. <laughs> Go Casper. <laughs> All right. This might be a neither two. And remember, you can take a pass. <coughs> you can pass. Uh, candy corn or bit of honey? <laughs> candy corn. Neither. Candy corn. Candy corn, but only if it's Brock's. Oh, yes. It has to be Brock's. That's yeah. so true. <laughs> Very true. Candy corn. Candy corn. Neither. Yeah. Bit of honey. Trash. Neither. Uh, candy corn, and have you had it with nuts when you mix the two together? It's oh, really good. Candy corn. Okay. Uh, regular M and M's or peanut? Regular. Uh, regular. 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 I agree. They're both so good. I go regular too. I'll do any M and M but peanut. Oh. <laughs> peanut. Yeah. I prefer peanut butter, but I'll go with regular. I do not like peanut M and M's. Peanut. Both. Regular. Peanut. 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 Okay. Packers, Bears, or other? Packers. 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 Only one option, Packers. Dave, you're right. There is only one option, Bears. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. There it is. Uh, Packers. 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 Bears. <laughs> 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 really? My pastor said the same thing. <laughs> Packers. 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 <laughs> Who's winning the Super Bowl, NFC or AFC? NFC. <laughs> I know nothing about sports <laughs> whatsoever. <laughs> so <laughs> NFC. <laughs> NFC. The good football team? <laughs> <laughs> NFC. 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 AFC. NFC. NFC. Which are vampire? Vampire. Which are vampire? 
Uh, we tripped Which? up. <laughs> what did you say? Which? Which? Vampire. Deep. Vampire. Vampire. Which? Vampire. Which? 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 Vampire. Which? Neither. Which? Which? For everybody that answered vampire, what's your blood type? <laughs> I think that's HIPAA protected, actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> you can pass one. Yeah, this is the last one you can pass. <laughs> All right, happy Halloween, and we'll decide whether you got to dress up on the 17th. All right. Remember, on the 17th, though, <laughs> one, we have a budget study session. <laughs> Two, we have the school board presenting. <laughs> the nonprofits. So, the nonprofits. So if we come dressed as clowns and monkeys. No, no, and you're coming either as a witch or a vampire. <laughs> I'll mention it to the accreditation team, too. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Just a little heads up probably would help. Well, they have to dress up too. Anybody that enters the chambers, right? <laughs> all right. I know you guys all love to be together, but do you want to adjourn? <laughs> all those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. See you all soon. Good night, Dave.